Hello there. Today is Friday, October the 14th, and we're reading 2 Kings 24 and 25, 2 Chronicles 36, Psalm 126, and 1 Peter 3. There's four different places in the Bible to read today, two, or sorry, sorry, three Old Testament and one New Testament passage. And uh, we're looking through this whole thing. I'm focusing in on 2 Kings 24 and 25. This is the end of 2 Kings. Uh, it's the end of this time of Kings that we're going to be reading here together. And, um, some things are starting to happen. I'll, I'm going to be honest with you as I read through. I've heard others say as we've been talking through this all together as a staff and sharing with you our thoughts and, and what God's saying to us. I'm feeling the weight too of repetitiveness. It feels like same things are happening. Today we have Jehoiakim and Jehoiakim. There's two different kings. We have Zedekiah. We have the fall of Jerusalem. Babylon takes them off and uh, takes them over and all these things and I feel like I've read these types of things before the king didn't lead well there was sin there was brokenness there were consequences and I feel like it because I have you have too we've been reading the same thing for a while why are we reading the same thing over and over? Why does it seem like the people are doing the same things over and over and over again uh, maybe a phrase that you've heard before and it's very true is that those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it. That's true nationally, it's true globally, it's true biblically. Those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. We're reading the same things over and over because king after king after king after king were repeating the same sins, the same brokenness, the same consequences over and over, and the people just weren't getting it. They weren't getting it. Well, church, I want to tell you if we're going to live a life that is clinging to Jesus and pursuing him in a better way, a different way, I want to encourage you to not repeat the same mistakes of history. I want to encourage you to look at 2 Kings, 1 Kings, and Chronicles, and all these things. Look at the kings. Look at the sin. Look at the brokenness. Look at the problems and look at the pain. And you, you look in the mirror and you say to yourself, maybe point a finger at yourself and say, I'm not going to live that way. Don't repeat the sins of the past. Don't do that. As we wrap up 2 Kings right here, we're preparing to lean in to uh, Ezekiel and to Daniel and to Esther and to Ezra and Nehemiah. These things are going to start happening where we see the people of God returning back out of exile. We see Daniel standing firm in exile. He's being carried off right as we speak right now in 2 Kings. We see Nehemiah leading the charge home as we're reading the scrolls and reminding the people of who God is. But right here at the end of 2 Kings, there's a glimmer of hope. Jehoiakim, the king, was carried off into exile. He's released from prison. He sits at the king's table. He has uh, better clothes. He has a regular allowance, a daily allowance. All these things are given to him. We see a glimmer of hope, and we're reminded, I'm reminded, that God says, even though in this context, in 2 Kings, even though there's going to be 70 years of pain, I won't forget you. I'll bring you home. My people will not go away. God says he will not abandon us. He will not abandon them and will not forsake them. And eventually there's a better day. I want to remind you. That even though it feels like things are falling apart, even though you might look at your family, and you might look at your, your family, your, your parents, their parents, their parents, their parents, and you see a cycle of sin, you can be the one to break it. If you know history and you know Jesus, you can let Jesus transform the future. You can do that. Even though it feels like things are hurt and broken uh, in your nation, in your, in your country, in your county, in your city, you can be the one to break a cycle, start a new thing. Even though it feels like there's pain all around, there's consequences for sin or brokenness, there are. But there's a glimmer of hope because Jesus says, I will never leave you, never abandon you, never forget you. His sacrifice was for you. His victory over death was for you. And now he gives you the option, the opportunity to choose. Who are you going to live for? What are you going to live for? I want to encourage you. As we wrap up the bleakness of the kings, you cling to the hope of the cross, the victory of the kingdom. And you say, I will not forget and ignore history. I will not repeat it. 
but you look at that and you say, I'm going to choose a better way. I'm going to choose Jesus's way. Hope that's how you live your day to day. Hope that's how you're raising your family, how you're living your life, going to your work. I hope you're living, choosing a Jesus way. Until I see you again, you are sent. <laughs>